Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind. Let's tackle some cultural Marxism, shall we? Let's get engaged and keep covering the culture war. You know, I tend to use these concepts when speaking, like inflection point, or this is the straw that breaks the camel's back. These are kind of reoccurring themes that you'll see pop up in multiple of my videos. Well, folks, that's exactly where we are. An inflection point, and the straw is finally breaking the camel's back. There's too much hay for the camel to handle, and so the structure is breaking. It's falling. Falling apart. We're talking about the inclusion of transgender athletes in female sports. You know, it was only a matter of time until this whole thing fell apart. I don't know what the cultural Marxists were thinking with this one. It's a step too far, but that's pretty much exactly what they do. Well, that step too far is causing some serious backlash, as women across various different sports are now refusing to compete due to the increased presence of biological males competing in female sports, and of course, surprise to absolutely no one, in many instances injuring young female athletes. We got some stuff to get into, folks. Let's take a look at what's going on in the culture wars. So let's roll the tape. All right, folks, so here's the first story from the Daily Mail. Boy, is the Daily Mail on top of these kinds of stories. Teammates rally around transgender woman footballer who quit after rivals refused to compete against her after she left opponents, quote, terrified and broke a player's knee as she threatens to sue for discrimination. Fans are rallying behind a transgender woman footballer who quit her team after rivals were quote, terrified by her physical power on the pitch, and they refused to compete against this particular individual. Francesca Needham, 30, withdrew from South Yorkshire's based Rossington, Maine Ladies for the foreseeable future after opponents refused to play the team last weekend over alleged safety concerns. The boycott is said to have followed a player suffering a broken knee when blocking a shot from the trans player. Two matches in the Sheffield and Hallamshire Women's League were called off as a result of the campaign. Needham has since announced that she is to step down from playing football for the sake of her club and is threatening to sue as she said she has abided by all football association policies on transgender players. Supporters have now branded the situation as saddening and told Needham that they will stand by you as she paves the way forward for other trans players. Okay, now, uh, leftist lunacy aside, this individual plans to sue the league for discrimination. I want to speak in a certain way, but I will refrain. What on God's green earth am I even reading. We have a biological male who entered female sports in a more casual environment. This individual is clearly strong, bigger, you know, built, husky, probably isn't very good at playing soccer, but just gets by by being bigger and stronger, biologically, probably doesn't have much control athletically. I mean, I'm sure you guys have seen trash soccer players, you know, the people who come in swinging like freaking Charlie Brown, they kick with their toe, they have no idea how to kick a ball, and they just see it and then run up like poof, like a damn freaking pendulum swing. Most likely that's exactly what happened. This person has no actual skill with the ball, just went and tried to kick it extremely hard, probably made contact with a female player's shin, and literally shattered that person's tibia. You know, what freaking world are we living in where that that person is now going to sue the organization as if they're the victim. Victim of what exactly? Victim of your own horrible decision making? I'm stepping down because I'm facing discrimination and I'm fighting a fight. No, you're not fighting a fight. You are terrifying female athletes. You're breaking their shins as you forcibly enter their competitive athletic space. And now the trans athlete is the victim here. Give me a freaking break. I mean, what is going on? You know, I want to go on and on about the biological facts and why this makes no sense, why we should be protecting girls, yada, 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 you know, the broken record stuff, the stuff that you're going to hear from any common sense, rational adult making content on this topic, but we've been through it all before. I don't feel like I really need to say it. This individual broke a girl's shin bone, as if that's not enough information already. Oh, but people get injured in sports. Yeah, but not to this degree, to this level, and this consistently, as we see between this interaction between female athletes and biological male athletes. And so it's kind of like a situation where I don't feel like I need to make the argument anymore. The argument is making itself. You can see it visually. Everybody can see it. I keep reporting reporting on these instances. I mean, it never ends. And so speaking is not relevant here. I don't need to make the case. People just get it at this point. And most importantly, the most important element to actually achieving change on this particular culture war issue, it's already happening. It's the young female athletes. 
It's the young women, and in some cases adult women, who are competing in these leagues. They are reaching a breaking point. That's what I've noticed. And I think it's pretty much undeniable at this point that that's exactly what's happening. You know, the clown show is over and it's time for the circus to get out of town. And we're at the point where young girls are just saying enough is enough and they're not competing. And well, it's achieving the exact change that was required here. From Riley Reed to now just regular girls feeling as though they have the confidence, they have the ability to not go with it anymore, to stop giving in to the social pressure and the intimidation, forcing people in line to accept the neo-Marxist status quo. And that right there is the grassroots movement that leads to everything else, right? It's the people themselves who are involved in these leagues, involved in, you know, the money-making process for these leagues. The moment they start to move, the moment they start to act, well, all of a sudden, the whole thing falls apart. And that's exactly what's happening. We have another story here. This is from the International Cricket Council. The sport of cricket, not exactly, you know, popular within the Western world, but in the Eastern world, it's one of the biggest sports. Transgender players are now banned from international women's cricket by ICC, the International Cricket Council. This piece comes from The Guardian. The International Cricket Council has become the latest sports body to ban transgender players from the elite women's game if they have gone through male puberty. The ICC said it had taken the decision following an extensive scientific review and nine-month consultation to protect the integrity of international women's game and the safety of our players. It joins the rugby union, swimming, cycling, athletics, and rugby league, who have all gone down a similar path in recent years after citing concerns over fairness and safety. Interesting, huh? All these leagues all of a sudden approaching this issue with intellectual honesty, launching multi-month-long investigations, scientific reviews, and all pretty much coming to the same conclusion that female sports should be protected. Oh, how it's just so interesting, huh? I find it a little bit ironic, you know, a little bit funny. After years and years of hearing all the leftoids constantly telling us how the science is clear on this issue, and that actually you're a science-denying bigot, if you don't agree with them, you know, that's pretty much been the narrative that they've attempted to spin here, but it seems as though the science was never clear. It seems as though what lefties were referencing was most likely pseudoscience at best, and actual honest scientific reviews are all leading to the exact same conclusion that biological males should not be competing in these events. Period. Point blank. They should be banned from the international competitions, and even in local competitions and local leagues where they aren't banned, well, we're seeing it basically the same end result as female athletes themselves are refusing to compete. They're pulling out of these events. They're saying absolute no to competing against biological males. Remember, I mean, just recently we covered, I think, that jujitsu tournament where those young girls were essentially telling us they were terrified. It was scary and they were pulling out of the competition because they were scared of getting injured by males competing in the league. That's what's happening across the board. And so finally, it seems as though sanity, common sense, and basic, you know, science and biology, it seems as though all of those concepts are finally prevailing. You know, good ideas tend to bubble to the surface, and bad ideas tend to sink. That's exactly what's happening, folks. Rejoice as common sense ends the victor at the end of the day. Anyways, that's what I got for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe. Thanks for watching, friends, and I will see you on the next one.